This is Intermediate Algebra. We're in Section A.2. The topic is Compound Inequalities. Uh, this starts on page 6 of your textbook. The first thing we see is a couple of examples of what a compound inequality looks like. And of course, inequality has to do with these greater than, less than symbols. A compound inequality um, gives us the presence of these two keywords, and and or. Uh, 2x plus 3 is greater than 7 and x is less than 5 which means that the only numbers that satisfy the x are the numbers that meet both uh, statements with an and. x plus 3 is less than or equal to 17 or 2x is less than 5 thirds which means that the numbers that meet the qualifications for x can meet one or the other of these statements. So and and or are not the same thing. They are two different kinds of compound inequalities but they are compound inequalities. The next thing we see on this page is uh, some set builder notation, which looks like this. Um, and we read this as x, a set of x such that x is less than negative 3. And that means that the numbers that satisfy the qualifications for x or that meet the conditions set by an inequality are all less than negative 3. So this is uh, set builder notation. We're going to use set builder notation and interval notation when we uh, describe our solution sets for compound inequalities. So for example 1, we see the directions to solve the compound inequality. x plus 4 is less than 1 and x plus 2 is less than 3. That means that only the values of x that meet both qualifications <coughs> will be in our solution set. Now the first step when you're solving any kind of inequality, even if it's a single or a compound, is to isolate x. Now isolating x with an inequality is exactly the same as with an equation, except that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. So the first thing we're going to do here is subtract 4 to isolate this x. We have x is less than negative 3. We didn't have to flip because we did not multiply or divide by a negative. Then we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll subtract 2, and we have x is less than 1. And these are our two solution statements with the and in between them. Um, I like to first make some kind of graph of my solution statement. Um, to me, it's easier to picture that way. So I'm going to actually make three different graphs. The first one is going to be for this statement. x is less than negative 3. So uh, I need to put 0. For x to be less than negative 3, that negative 3 is open because there's no equation. These are all the numbers less than negative 3. Then I'm going to make another graph for this statement over here. x is less than 1. And when I make my graphs, I'm going to actually make them so that they line up. Because with AND, you want to be able to see uh, where the shading overlaps. So x is less than 1 would be all of this. Now, since this is a compound, only the numbers that meet both qualifications are in our solution set. So you can kind of visualize these two graphs being merged together. If this one, blue one was merged on top of this red one, where does the shading overlap? And um, it's all, all the overlap will be down here. So this right here is our solution. And I'm going to state that as x is less than negative 3 because this was a negative 3. And this is my solution. Um, to write that as set builder notation. First start with the braces. x such that, and I just use this statement right here that describes this with the overlapping shade. x is less than negative 3, and this is the set builder. Uh, the interval notation for this area right here is negative infinity to negative 3. Um, and it's open at negative 3 because there were no equal bars on either of these less thans. So this is open at negative 3. So that's our solution here. We have a graph. Actually, we probably should draw one graph that depicts the solution. Um, it would be kind of um, 
just a duplication of this one since this one depicts this solution. But this is our solution graph. It's okay when you're working these to have these two graphs, but you should merge them into one solution graph with your set builder notation and your interval notation. All right, example two is on page seven. 2x is greater than or equal to 8 and 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. So the presence of this and means that the, the numbers that satisfy my x or solve have to meet both equations. So again, it's about the overlap when we draw the graphs. The first thing we're going to do is isolate x. So in this equation, divide by 2, we have x is greater than or equal to 4. We did not need to flip the symbol because we did not divide by a negative. This was a positive. Over here, we will add 1. We have 2x is less than or equal to 6. And then we will divide by 2. Again, no flipping because you only need to flip if you divide by a negative. So this is x less than or equal to 3. And these are our solution statements with the and. So again, I'm going to use the two graphs so that I can picture the overlap. So this first graph, x is greater than or equal to 4, means that the 4 is closed. Greater than 4 is all of this out into infinity. The second graph. I'm going to put the same numbers on here. Uh, x is less than or equal to 3 would be all of this. Uh, the word and, oops, the word and between these indicates that only the numbers that meet both conditions or the overlap on our graphs will be the solution. When you look at these two graphs, if you merge these together, there is no overlap. There is no overlap. Only these are shaded, only these are shaded. And that's because there are no numbers that are greater than 4, and at the same time, less than 3. There is no overlap here. So this statement, uh, this compound inequality has no solution. Example 3 is on the top of page 8. It says 1 is less than x, but 5 is less than 3. So this is the first time we've seen a compound inequality written like this with actually two symbols together. This is the same thing as saying and. It's like saying 1 is less than x plus 5 and x plus 5 is less than 3. This is just a compact way to write it. Now to solve this, you can separate this and make two statements using and, or you can solve it all together like this. Um, the important thing is to remember to balance out all three areas. So your x is going to get isolated here in the middle, but whatever you do here to isolate x, you have to do on the right and on the left. So I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to subtract 5 here to isolate x. I'll subtract 5 on the right, subtract 5 on the left. That isolates x for me. The inequality symbols are not changing because I did not divide by a negative. All I did was subtract. So these numbers are now negative 4 is less than x is less than negative 2. So now to graph this could be a little bit tricky, but it's fine. We can handle it. So if this is 0, this is negative 2, this is negative 4. I'm going to graph this part first in blue. It says negative 4 is less than x, which means x is greater than negative 4. So these numbers are all greater than negative 4, just like that. And then I'm going to graph this one down here. This one says x is less than negative 2. So that would be all of this, less than negative 2. And with a compound inequality, remember, you're looking for overlap. So if you merge these two graphs together, the overlap is here in the middle. So this is your solution set here. And to show that, I'm going to make a new graph, which is only shaded between negative 4 
and negative 2. And those are both open because there were no equal bars on those. So in set builder notation, x such that negative 4 is less than x is less than negative 2, or x is between negative 4 and negative 2. In interval notation, parentheses because the negative 4 is open, and parentheses on the negative 2 because it's also open. And that's the solution for this inequality. Example 4 is also on page 8. It says 4 is less than or equal to 5 minus x is less than or equal to 8. And again, this is the same for, this is the same as saying and. This is a compound inequality that's an and. Um, we're going to isolate x in the middle. Again, anything I do to isolate x here in the middle, I also have to do on the left and on the right. That leaves me, though, with a negative x in the middle, which I cannot have because I want to have positive 1x. So to get rid of this negative on this x, we're going to divide by negative 1. This is where that extra rule comes in for inequalities. If you divide by a negative number, you have to flip the direction of these inequalities. So these are now going to be greater than or equals. This will be x, negative 3, and positive 1. Now, it's kind of standard to write these compound inequalities with less thans, not greater thans. We came out with a greater than. It's very easy to change this to a greater than. All you have to do to change it is switch these two numbers. Because what this really means is that if 1 is greater than x, then x is less than 1. If x is greater than negative 3, then negative 3 is less than x. If you flip these two numbers, um, this changes to uh, less than. So negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. And that's how you change it so that it has a less than. You just change these two numbers, and you can flip the inequality. So this is now our solution. We're going to uh, put this on a graph. That's negative 3. That's 0. That's 1. I'm going to graph these two separately. I'm going to make two graphs because I like to see where the overlap is by using two graphs. All right, so first, negative 3 is less than x means x is greater than negative 3. And it's equal to, so we'll color that in. So this is the first part. Negative 3 is less than x. x is greater than negative 3. So that's the first part. The second part I'm going to write down here in blue. x is less than or equal to 1. So again, closed. Less than will be this way. These are all the numbers less than 1. And then I look for the overlap. The overlap is here between negative 3 and 1. So one graph that shows the entire solution, and these will be both closed, will be here. This is your solution graph. Then to write set builder, to write your set builder, you're just going to use this statement right here, your uh, solution statement. x such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. And this is your set builder. Your interval notation is going to be closed because those uh, those numbers have the equal on them. Negative 3 to 1. Always read your interval from least to greatest or left to right. Negative 3 is the left boundary. 1 is the right boundary. Everything between is shaded and their brackets because these had the equal bars on them, which made them closed. So these are brackets. So that's example 4. Example 5 is on page 9. 6 is less than 4x plus 2 over 3 is less than 10. And again, this is the same as saying and. It's just in, written in compact form. Uh, we're going to isolate x in the middle. Whatever we do here, we have to do also on the right and on the left. Um, sometimes the, the red bars can help. So to get rid of this denominator, we're going to multiply by 3. We can say it's 3 over 1. Okay, those 3's cancel. 
and we're left with 4x plus 2 in the middle. We have 30 on the right and 18 on the left. Then we will subtract 2. That gives 28 on the right, 4x in the middle, 16 on the left. Then we will divide by 4. Since we're dividing by a positive number, we do not need to worry about flipping the direction of the symbols. And we will end up with x in the middle, 7 on the right, 4 on the left. So this is our solution statement. This solution already has the less than symbols, so we don't need to worry about changing these numbers because we want them to be less than symbols. We can draw uh, a graph, and you can use two graphs if you want, or you can maybe you might be able to mentally make this into just one graph. Some people can see that if 4 is less than x, or x is greater than 4, but x is less than 7, the overlap is going to be between the 4 and the 7. And these will be open because there's no equal to bars. So this is the solution here. If you can't picture that, you can go ahead and make the two graphs and try and merge them if you like. The set builder notation is x such that 4 is less than x is less than 7. That's your set builder notation. Your interval notation has parentheses this time because the 4 and the 7 are open. There's no equal bars, so these are open. Left to right, the left boundary is 4, the right boundary is 7, and they are open. So this is your interval notation. Okay, so that's it for the ands. Uh, we're going to go on to or on page uh, 9. So uh, I think I'll put the ors in the next video. So uh, go on to the next video.